No one's a tester of Democrat and Republican patients alike quite like John Tester, the subject of this week's Political Figure episode. Born August 21st, 1956 in Havre, 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 Montana, John grew up on the land his grandfather homesteaded in 1912, a farm he still owns and operates to this day. When he was nine years old, he stuck his hand in a meat grinder and it didn't go well, but now he's really good at the Stavi wave. In 1978, he graduated from the University of Providence, which is not in Rhode Island, uh, with a bachelor's in music. In the 80s and 90s, he worked as a music teacher for a couple of years and then went back to farming and switched from conventional to organic farming and was also on the Soil Conservation Committee and served on the Agricultural Stabilization and Conservation Services Committee. I had to relook up that title like four freaking times. I gave up on trying to pronounce the county it was a part of. In 1999, he was elected to the 45th District of Montana State Senate. And during his eight-year tenure, he served as minority whip, minority leader, and president of the Senate. Pretty impressive resume for a Montana Democrat. During his time at the State Senate, he was instrumental in getting legislation and programs instituted that lower prescription drug costs, increased school funding, and increased renewable energy in Montana. But Montana state senate seats are term limited, so in 2007, he moved from state senate to U.S. Senate. Well, since being in the Senate, Tester has been the type of senator Joe Manchin should have been. As in, not completely useless. Now, he is painfully fucking moderate, which is to be expected, because, you know... It's Montana. It's one of those great examples of when voters are willing to look past a party line, they can get a representative that actually represents them. He's tended to be very conservative on the type of things that Montana Montanans, Montanaans, uh, tend to be conservative on as actual people, you know, human beings that aren't psychotic. Like guns, Tester has been incredibly pro-gun. As he probably should be. It's Montana. There's not a lot to do but get drunk and shoot stuff. Guns are important to people in Montana. He knows that and he represents those people, not the party line. In fact, he's done it so well that he had an A-minus rating as a Democrat from the NRA. However, they did downgrade him to a D when he voted against confirming Judge Tom T. Hall, I mean Brett Kavanaugh for the United States Supreme Court. But then again, the NRA doesn't actually give a shit about gun rights. They're just a bunch of corporate shills and Russian lobbyists. So who gives a shit what they think anyway. When it comes to the environment, he's pretty conservative as well. He does support green energy and believes that climate change is real because, you know, he's not a fucking moron. He did favor the Keystone XL shortcut, which again, makes sense considering his constituents. He's been pretty lenient on logging, generally showing more support for commercial logging than conservation. And also wolves. He's a big fan of shooting wolves. He spent a good portion of his career trying to make shooting wolves more legal for Montana. Which again, makes sense because people from Montana make their whole personality hating wolves. It's, it's weird, but it's a thing they do. He also tends to swing conservative on economic policies, specifically like banking regulation policies, uh, but that might just be all of the corporate money he takes, because he does take a lot of it. That one might not be a constituent thing, that might just be the, those are the people who've paid him thing. He also filibustered Obama's Americans Jobs Act, and I'm not really sure why. He said it had something to do with the way that it was going to bring jobs to Montana, and it wasn't good enough, but I didn't really articulate what that meant. So I don't know if that was constituent driven or paying back the people that pay him. He also tends to be a tad bit more conservative on immigration, which like, guys, come on. Y yeah, sure, Montana's a border state with, with fucking Canada. Calm the fuck down. He's voted against amnesty or any path to citizenship for current undocumented immigrants, which I think is totally bullshit. But to his credit, he has not supported and has voted against all of the ridiculous immigration policies Republicans have put forward saying that they are ridiculous, and has worked to put forward policy for comprehensive immigration reform that is desperately needed, just it hasn't gone anywhere. Mostly because Republicans won't let that happen, because if they actually fixed immigration, they wouldn't be able to bitch about immigration. On LGBT rights, he has slowly come around. He used to be really conservative, voting against gay marriage, as one would expect, and he has since praised the Supreme Court's decision that all states must recognize gay marriage, and he voted for the Respect for Marriage Act in 2022. Which again, I feel like this falls well along constituent lines. They were probably one of the last states to really, you know, embrace gay marriage, but now most of the population, regardless if you're in a red state or a blue state, doesn't give a shit who you love. Let them do it. At this point, LGBTQ rights are just overwhelmingly popular with voters across the country, and if you're a politician who doesn't support them, you're just an asshole who hates voters and is a homophobe. And if you are a voter who's against LGBTQ rights, you're just, you know, a bad person and nobody should give a shit about your opinion anyway. At this point, you're probably just saying, wow, this guy is basically just Republican light. Hold your horses, I'm getting to the good stuff. 
like I said, he supports things that would be supported by his constituents. And one of those things is universal health care. He's a big fan of it, as is anyone with a functioning brain. But specifically people in Montana, because well privatized health insurance is an abysmal failure across the board, it's even more of a devastating failure in a state that's population is like 13 poor people and a couple rich assholes who definitely don't care about those 13 poor people. Like they just don't have the population density that would entice private health companies to invest in the infrastructure and resources to give them any semblance of quality health care. They don't have the population density for the state to do it either, but hey, us blue states already subsidized the shit out of them anyway, so we might as well give them some health care in the process. He is super anti-Patriot Act, which I just think is the act of a patriot. In fact, his Senate opponent criticized him for wanting to weaken the Patriot Act when he was first running for Senate, and he's like, I don't want to weaken the Patriot Act. I want to repeal the fucking thing. One of the reasons he voted against Brett Kavanaugh was because of his support for the Patriot Act. So, you know, he tends to be a big fan of maintaining citizens' privacy, and I appreciate that. He also voted against every other Trump nominee for the Supreme Court. He opposes Citizens United. He also voted to convict Trump in both impeachment trials. So the January 6th insurrectionists were disgusting and domestic terrorists. He's also a pretty staunch supporter of women's health care and bodily autonomy rights. And it's politicians like John Tester I have a lot of respect for. Because I disagree with a ton of his policy positions. But he seems to hold the majority of those policy positions very genuinely and authentically and uses them to support his constituents. He's not pandering to the party line to climb the political ladder at the expense of his constituents like Beto O'Rourke or literally any mega politician. But he's not snubbing his party, his ethics and ideals in a desperate attempt to hang on to his seat in a conservative state like, you know, Joe Manchin. He's a moderate in the best way you can be a moderate and I hate moderates. He's a moderate in a seat where moderates should sit and he's a moderate because that's what his constituents want their representation to be. And it's hard to hate that. So I hope the people of Montana can continue to put policy and people above party and reelect John Tester this November. Because being a real Montana farmer from Montana, he's gonna represent Montana way better than Tim Sheehy. Because a motherfucker running against him is a silver spoon sucking private school going trust fund baby from the suburbs of Minnesota who's a multi-millionaire and fancies himself a part-time rancher. I know how you Montanans feel about those rich fucks who go out there to cosplay as John Dutton, so make wise choices. You got a real one out there with John Tester. Don't fuck it up for a rhinestone cowboy from a St. Paul suburb.